Hey there. Happy Pi Day, everybody. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Sports Adrenaline Las Vegas show. Um, it's Pi Day. It's March 14th, 3.14. I thought you're talking about the pie we have in front of us. Oh, right that's here. right. Yeah, we've got pizza pie here, and we have cheesecake here. We're also, as you, well, we did it last week. We're giving away a $25 gift card to Grimaldi's. We'll figure out how we're going to give it away. Last week, we did best comments, and uh, Kim, very nice viewer, Kim, uh, won that gift card. She got really excited about it, by the way. Um, so we'll have that. But we've got a lot to talk about, including Matt Gutierrez's diet, right? So uh -oh. Matt's here, John's uh -oh. here. And the pizza's here from Grimaldi's. So um, the diet, final stretch run in the regular season from the Golden Knights. They're only six points up on uh, on Arizona, and they play Arizona second to last game of the season. So that they do, last that home be, game of the that season. That could be that could be a very important game. Let's hope not. Uh, is UNLV basketball dead? We're going to have that discussion after a good game up until the last four minutes. They were tied with four minutes to go, and then they blew it. Uh, Raiders. A contender in the AFC now, huh? I, I, well, let's not jump the gun oh, because no? they still no. uh, okay, don't I... have much of a defense to speak oh, of. But we'll right. get there. The draft's we'll definitely coming. Get into the race. But they made some, some free agency moves. They, uh, they've they been making noise, so we'll get into that in a minute as well. Uh, lights news, aviators news. They've got some grass out at the stadium out uh, in Summerlin. The Las Vegas ballpark is coming along nicely. Should be ready for opening day. Uh, Matt, great to see you. Me we do. I, I mean, it's like we say it every week, and I feel like a broken record, but it's the, so much happening. We should do this every day, I feel like. We could do it every day. Uh, I'm good with We could get Grimaldi's every day. every day, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah. That's not going to help my diet. Yeah, though. no, it's not. So, well, what's the lowdown with your diet? I, I, like, anybody why, why, cares. Why do, we, like, <laughs> why do I have to get into my diet? But make it quick. So you're, you're training for Tough Mudder, right? And this is just torture. Well, I, I mean, everything leads into Tough Mudder usually for me at the end of the year. But yeah. no, my wife, uh, the company she works for, put together this big – 60-day challenge and spouses are involved, yeah. so I have to be Does a supportive husband. Does she like win something if you? If she you cannot hold win. I can win. Oh, okay, got it. I, I can. I'm a spouse. I'm allowed to win. Yeah. So you know, it, it's I'm on my tenth day now, and I've been been dieting really well. I've been working out. I'm already down six and a half pounds, two percent body fat. Going strong, man. Yeah. We're, we're doing. We're doing good. We got a ways to go. Well, you just had a slice of pizza, so did I. I'm starving. Yeah, that's my that's my cheat <laughs> meal for the week. We'll get right to there. that in a little bit. Um, but thanks for hopping on, everybody. If you're new to our show, again, uh, we're pretty unique. Not a lot of people doing what I, I don't think there's anybody doing what we're doing, at least no, to the caliber that we do it. We stream live here on Facebook every Thursday at approximately 7.30. Uh, producer extraordinaire Rich Giacovino, we're in his store, uh, studio here, um, and we're just talking sports. So we want your interaction. We want your input. And, again, today, $25 gift card to Grimaldi's. We did it last week. Uh, I'd say just start commenting now. You can talk about Matt's diet or the fact that we look professional today. I have my <laughs> Marsha Show jersey over here in the corner, but I didn't put it on beforehand. But let's talk some sports, all right? So let's start with the knighthood, as we call it, Vegas Golden Knights. Um, we're going to start there, even though there's some other news. But, you know, we're a, Knights, we're a hockey town now, Matt. We've got to lead where, where the fans are, even though the Knights haven't played in a minute. We, I think we have hockey fever right now. Are we yeah. a hockey town yet? Yeah. Uh, is that official? No, we are because it's been snowed. a basketball city for such a long it's time. Snowed. The NFL's on its way. Right. It's snowed. but no, we are obviously all about hockey it's right snowed. now, and it looks. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while. It looks like the Knights are going to be in the playoffs for the second year in a row, and only their second year of existence. So in the Hard middle, to imagine. in the middle of a little bit uh, uh, of their, I guess, final rest here, which yeah, this, at is, a a, great this time. is like a bye week, yeah. man. So last month of the season, 12 games left. They're six points ahead of Arizona, as we alluded to at the top of the show. So maybe, may, maybe that's a danger spot with 12 games left. Maybe it's, maybe it's. I mean, clearly the Golden Knights are going to have to fight to to make sure that they they stay in the playoffs. They've got Dallas here coming up, and then uh, home game uh, against Edmonton, followed by uh, back to back against San Jose. They've only played them twice this season, so they've got two more. Two more, both in San yeah. Jose. Mm -hmm. So and that'll be interesting. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. They've, I mean, every. Seems like every team they play down the stretch is a playoff team. Dallas is in the playoffs right now. Um, obviously, Edmonton not, but they have one of the best players on the planet in Connor, Connor McDavid. Uh, San Jose, Winnipeg, Detroit's not. St. Louis, uh, Colorado's right on the outside looking in. Same with Minnesota. And then San Jose again. So uh, they're going to have to play good hockey down the stretch. But I, I feel like they've done enough at this point. Yeah. They're going to be okay. Obviously, since Stone got there, they've gone, what, 6-1 since the, since the Matt Stone trade. Uh, so they're they're playing much better now. I think they've kind of found found their rhythm, um, building some chemistry there. Their depth is a lot better. They're more spread out. 
uh, as far as their lines go, being being even one through four. So uh, I think a much more balanced attack. You're going to see a better hockey club going forward. Yep. And, um, I mean, just, just beat the teams in front of you, and everything's going to take care sure. of itself because you're in a playoff spot. Sorry. I, I mean, I said it weeks ago, and sure, maybe it seemed obvious, but nobody was really voicing it. After they won three straight, that's when I said, slump's over. This team's fine, and yep. they're just ramping up. Sure. I think you said it after the first win, John, yeah. and you just okay. stuck with it. That's fine. Uh, I need to get on my signage rant, too, at some point. I haven't done it on this show, at least this year. Yep. Last year, you may recall me calling out Clark County, city of Las Vegas, city of Henderson's awesome. Called out the airport a little bit. The airport didn't like it. No, Nobody no. likes it when I call them to the carpet, clearly. Um, but uh, we need to get on the signage rant. My wife is already commenting, already hates you. Have no idea why. I don't either. I don't know what I did to your wife to make her <laughs> Maybe angry. Maybe I should be but... home instead of here right now. <laughs> I have no idea. So it's Dallas tomorrow. Um, but I guess, again, we're both in agreement. Team's playing well. I, I would love to get your thoughts uh, out here. Just chime in and comment. We can kind of bounce back and forth a little bit. Who would you rather see the first round? Let's start there. Uh, assuming that they make the, the playoffs, it's going to be either San Jose or it's going to be the Flames. San Jose up by one point in the Pacific right now. Again, it's the second-place finisher in the division. We'll play the Golden Knights in the first round as long as things stay the way they are. I would like to see them play Calgary in the first round, to be honest with you. Um, I, think, I think top to bottom, San Jose is the better team. Um, I, I think Vegas just matches up better with Calgary. And, and take the two losses out, that they, the blowout losses they have in Calgary, um, you could say, yeah, it's on the road. Calgary plays so well at home. They're a better offensive team at home. And that's all true, but those were both on back-to-backs, I believe. Second game of back-to-backs. And Malcolm Subban started both of those games. Um, take that for what you want. Subban hasn't been great. Uh, he hasn't been terrible a lot of times this season. The defense has left him in some bad positions. But he hasn't been great either, and he hasn't been good away from T-Mobile at all. Pretty much since. Yeah, Bill I was going to bring that up and sound really smart, but yeah, no, go right I, ahead. I, I'm, I'm on the same page as you. Calgary, uh, all day long. Well, not all, maybe not all day long. Golden Knights beat San Jose six nothing. Their first matchup of the mm-hmm. season. Second one they lose three two. So you know both you know close game and then a blowout for the Knights. You have two blowouts for Calgary again based on is it Subban? That first one was a train wreck. Seven two loss early on in the season. I think that was before um, before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to, I mean, if I were to pick, I'd say Calgary, um, just because, you know, uh, with Marc-Andre Fleury and Nett, you feel, like, you, you feel good about either team. I don't really have a total preference here, um, but I think we can agree that this, you, no matter who they face, it's a team that they can beat. I mean, I don't think they're going to be overmatched. Um, I was looking at power rankings on ESPN today. Uh, Sharks 2, Flames 4, Golden Knights 12. Um, and it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, how maybe you could you could justify that a couple of weeks ago before this trade, but you look at the way this team is built now with Mark Stone in that lineup, and I don't I don't see how you can put them at twelve. You're basically saying they're the worst playoff team in the NHL heading into the playoffs in a couple of weeks, and I don't think that's the case. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see the Golden Knights come. Nobody. April. Nobody wants to play that team, especially early on. They're going to be a tough out no matter what. Nobody wants to go to T-Mobile and play because we know how difficult it is to play there. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury is going to be the best goaltender in net throughout the Western Conference playoffs. I think. I don't think there's a better one right. over there. Right. Um, it, it's. I mean, it maybe irrelevant if they get to the Stanley Cup final again this year and Tampa Bay sitting there because they look unbeatable at this point. But they're they're going to be a tough out in the Western Conference playoffs again. And I think Calgary's Calgary's going to be uh, up for the challenge. I think that could be a six or seven game series. But I do feel the Golden Knights are the better team. San Jose is going to be tough if they get that far. Uh, Mark Andre on Baby Watch still. I don't think there's been any updates um, on that, but his wife is uh, expecting any day now. Mm-hmm. The new dad feel. I mean, we've seen it around the team before. I think with um, who was it this March year? March so. Oh, no, Mar- no, no, no. Was it Marsha Show? Marsha Show. I last think year? is having a baby soon. Yeah. Okay. Marsha Show. Carpenter on the list. as well. Okay. I think I think their wives are just newly pregnant. Actually. It, it's. I don't know. It. It's moved to Vegas. Go to the Stanley Cup final and then yeah, start your family, start, man. Yeah, <laughs> baby starts showing up. All Everybody's right. in a good mood. But I, but I, I mean, you would think that that would probably relax Mark Andre even more. I, I, I mean, I know that's what he focuses on. He's talked about it continually. The more relaxed he is in net, the better off he's going to be. Now, I know a new baby brings its own challenges, but it also brings a lot of smiles um, and it gives you a lot of perspective. And this is a completely abstract thought here, but I feel like 
if anything, Mark Andre's going to play even better in the playoffs after the baby shows up. I mean, if he plays like he played last year in the playoffs, I don't think we have right. anything to we worry don't about have. anyways. He was right. spectacular up until, you know, the, the Stanley Cup final. So uh, I think he's going to be fine. Like I said, he'll probably be the best, the best goalie in net throughout the Western Conference uh, playoffs, uh, assuming they – Mm-hmm. They get through three rounds of that. Uh, here's the gift card here, 25 bucks to Grimaldi's. Five locations across town. We get our pie uh, from the South Rainbow location. Uh, Christina's awesome. Vince De La Cruz is awesome. Uh, Joe, the GM over there, is awesome. And they keep on just sending us stuff. We have, we have cheesecake here today. Um, cheesecake, We're well man. taken care how of. How long have I been telling you how good this, <laughs> since the first day they brought this pizza over, I've been talking about how good Grimaldi's cheesecake yeah. is. Now you're going to see, John. Uh, you're going to see how good this is. Best comment. I mean, at least right now we'll do best comment because I, I just like that challenge. It encourages you guys to interact. 25 bucks. Uh, Muffy with the best comment so far. We will beat anyone you put in front of us. I like that. And then, uh, Michael, we'll get to your thoughts on the, uh, on the Raiders. Fourth pick, they say, uh, sorry, it just scrolled on me, Devin White from LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, Ah, that's, de- that's defense. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get that's, there. That's defense. Yeah, yeah. and my and, wife and, wants and the that's, pizza. I mean, it's it's going to be defense. Let's just yeah. let's just accept that. Everyone. I don't I don't think Tiffany can. Although we don't have any rules at Sports Adrenaline, like I could just give this to my wife, <laughs> but I think I'll go ahead. And make I don't, this I don't think you should do no that. Family like, members, uh, no family members. No family no members. I'll try to, I'll try to like get uh, Tiffany a pie here. Um, keeping with the Golden Knights, uh, here's an interesting stat uh, for those of you who like to talk about puck luck. Right, very abstract. But we have a, well, I, I take that back. Not abstract, but it's something that people talk about a lot. Puck's just not going in the net. Mm-hmm. We know that the Golden Knights, one of the leaders in the NHL as far as pucks off posts. But here's a stat that I pulled up here. Uh, goal, actual goal differential of minus 22. This is a stat that subtract, subtracts expected goals from actual goals. So it means that ton of good chances, not converting them right now. So minus two means they should have scored 22 more goals at this point than they have this season. And you're talking about at that point, 22 goals could be four or five wins for this team. Yeah, easily, especially with all the one-goal losses they've had. Um, and, yeah, I mean, luck is, luck plays – everybody makes fun of it because it's puck luck and it sounds hokey. Luck is a factor in sports, period. Sometimes you just – you talk about a, a lucky bounce or a bad hop, um, things like that in, in basketball and in baseball. That's, that's part of sports, and sometimes it just doesn't go your way. It, it hits, you know, this far to the left on the cross on the uh, the crossbar, and, and it goes out versus going in. So, you know, it, it's it's a hard thing to quantify because it is just a, a random occurrence. But you got to be more lucky sometimes. And this team hasn't been lucky enough getting the, the puck in the net. It doesn't mean that they're not playing good hockey. Yeah, right. uh, they are Absolutely. playing good hockey. They've been playing better hockey over the last couple of weeks. I think the chances are coming up. I think they're they're getting better looks. I think guys have been in better position. And once you start getting that confidence, I think you, you get that momentum rolling, better things happen. And I just don't see this team going on a stretch of bad games anymore, right? You, you might have your dud, like a 6-3 loss to Calgary. Not not the best game, but it was 3-3 three to three in that game. And then I think it was mm-hmm. two empty netters, actually. So yeah. uh, No, no, no. Was it one? No, I don't think they had any, actually. I think Kachuk got that, uh, that late. Was that an empty netter? I don't yeah, even remember I think, now. I think they I think had an was, empty yeah. netter in that. But 6-3. So, um, but it was tied 3-3. I think they showed a lot of fight uh, to come back. They were down 3-1 in that game mm-hmm. and came back and tied it up and at least made made a game of it. Um, uh, last, what, 50 seconds of the second period, they give up another late goal. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They've got to stop that. They've got to correct that going into the uh, going into the playoffs because that's happened too many times this season uh, with this team. They They – either tied or, or have the lead or maybe just down one goal and getting down to the end of the period. And whether it's just a, a lapse in concentration or bad play or what, they end up giving up that late score, and that's really killed them. And that, that really changed momentum in that game because the Knights dominated that second period to tie it up at three. You're a minute away from going into the third, tied up at three, and instead you're down four to three after the period ends. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a big switch, especially when you're on the road. Uh, and this is a, a good – a game for Dallas, it's, you know, getting to the point where Dallas is really fighting. They're tied for third um, in the in the Central Division with St. Louis. Again, it's in each division, top three teams are guaranteed a playoff spot. And then in the conference, you have the two best finishers that follow that, as far as points go, get wild card berth. So Dallas wants this game. So I think this is a big test um, for the Knights. Big uh, news for Dallas. Um, I'm looking at it right now on uh, CBSSports.com. Ben Bishop exits with injury, questionable to return for Thursday. Uh, Lower body might be out 
uh, tomorrow night against that's the Knights. A, that's I mean, a killer that's, for that. That's, that's a killer Especially on a back-to-back, -back, your goalie goes out. And Bishop's, what, 6'6"? Six, six. He's a beast in net. Yeah. Um, the Knights have struggled to score against him for the most part in the last two seasons. So, you know, you lose your top goaltender uh, going into the playoff run, and, and it can make things difficult. So we'll see if the Knights can capitalize on that tomorrow. Uh, Dana with a good comment. Hi, Dana. Thanks for tuning in. That's where Stone is played. Biggest difference is that luck is on our side. Uh, than the other team's side. Yeah, I, I mean, he's been a, he's clearly been a difference maker in yeah. that second line. Again, you don't have to be a hockey uh, expert to figure out that second line with Mark Stone and Pacioretty and Stasny is is phenomenal, right? So right. so if you need something to talk about at work or, you know, uh, at the wa water cooler, no, I don't think anybody has him anymore, but go over there and say, it's on Twitter. hey, Everybody talks how about Twitter that now. second line for the Golden Knights, huh? That, that's a good conversation starter. Yeah. You're going to sound really smart. This is what we do on this show. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of help. So if you're a hockey fan, but you're more like fanboy, fangirl, and you don't know stats, just start it with, hey, how about that second line for the Golden Knights? Uh, and you'll do well. Everybody will respond. Uh, how about the third line? Tuck scoring, Peary scoring, Eakin scoring, um, all, all three. Uh, and it wasn't the Calgary game. I believe it was the game before that. Right. Um, but they all, they're all scoring. If the third line on the Golden Knights continues to produce, it's a it's a it's an insane difference maker. Yeah, the first line's playing better now, and and we talked about this last week. The top line now not having to face everybody's best players throughout the the entire game because the second line is so dangerous now has opened them up, and you've seen them start to kind of get back to form the way they were last season. That was They're against Vancouver. Sorry, right, yeah, Vancouver. six two win. Starting to score. Uh, Riley Smith is coming around. Uh, Mark Stone needs to put the put the puck in the net. Maybe your jersey will bring him some luck there. But uh, mm -hmm. he's he's really struggled down the stretch. But yeah, first line starting to play better. We know what the second line is. If the third line becomes a consistent scoring threat, this team is dangerous. If you're rolling three lines through the playoffs right. and you bring out that fourth line to just beat people up, control the puck, wear guys down, which is what they do, especially once Will Carrier comes back. I mean, again, that's a tough out. This team is going to be dangerous down the stretch. Uh, did I say last week, Golden Knights? And I'll, I'll check my phone again. 12-1 to 1 to win the Stanley Cup. I think that's phenomenal odds um, at this point. I think that you're not going to find a better value. So if you're thinking about playoffs um, and you want to throw $10 on something, uh, that would be a good thing to, to throw it on and get some good value. Mm -hmm. You could get plenty of Grimaldi's pizza out of it. Um, Jim let's, was telling us Carpenter scored. He did. Yeah. Yeah, yep. uh, on on the fourth line. He was on the right. fourth line, though. Yeah, he was he was there for uh, no sec. No sec was a scratch in that game, I believe. And uh, Carrier still out. And Carpenter was down on the fourth line. I think you're correct. Yeah. Although now our, our stat, we're wrong. Stats? There's a lot of games. You know what? We need a stats a uh, corner. Uh, th this is correct. Um, well, I want to talk about Peary on the third line. I think he stays in. This is where Matt and I are going to argue. We don't argue a lot. I think Peary is better than Brian Carpenter. Peary should be in the lineup every day on the third line because of the upside. I think Peary's one-dimensional. I think he's a better That's offensive fine. player. Well, than I what don't you get disagree Carpenter. with you. But Carpenter plays on the PK. Carpenter plays on the power play. Carpenter gives you better 200-foot coverage than what Peary does. I'm not the biggest fan of Carpenter, don't get me wrong, but I think he is a – a more steady presence out there than what you get from Peary. If you get Peary hot, if he's rolling and he's throwing 10 goals and 10 games in like he was early in the season, roll with the hot hand. But if he's not, Carpenter is a great guy to put in his place because he can do so much more overall. Uh, Kim calling us out. She's in the running already for another gift card. No, Carpenter was on the third line. I don't know who we should trust. Um, maybe we should trust. Although, you know, Kim won the gift card last week saying, and I, and I didn't verify this. She she's talking about. She thought I said Nevada instead of Reno. I didn't even verify it. I just gave her the gift card. So we might have, like, fake news circling around. Kim's our fact checker. If you, if you want to come on the show, Kim, and be our fact checker, I guess we can do that <laughs> um, as well. Peary stays. Thank you, Dana. Dana, I agree with, and Kim's on Carpenter's side. All right. Um, we got to When you have Marc-Andre Mark Fleury in net, though, I get Peary has not proven to be a defensive liability, and that's my only argument for you. I mean, if he shows that if he's... If that's the case, though, then why is he always on the bench in the last three minutes of a close game? Well, that, well, that I mean, I mean that, he's that also not a strength defensively. You, I'm not saying he is. That makes him a liability. If you uh, can't have him out there, Ryan if you have to shorten Reeves your bench that there. badly, I don't know. then no. that makes him a liability. Uh, will carry a close to coming back? That's um, what Gallant said. Yeah, but... Th but you is, don't get any information. Close, with this team? close means close. I think a lot said he's closer than he was last week. I don't know. Howell was injured in what, late October? Yeah. We still don't know he's officially yeah. what the injury was. I'm sticking know. with an ACL tear, mm -hmm. but 
we still don't know officially what it is. So uh, this team is so cloak and dagger when it comes to their injuries. Um, but uh, this is a playoff team, correct? Yes. Uh, Arizona will not catch them. I don't think so. I, no. I, I don't think so either. I, you feel uh, Arizona's been hot. I think they went into a little stretch here. They're probably winning again um, because they're only six points back. But I think they're going to fade back. So, uh, again, Golden Knights can't hit any bad stretches here. They lose three or four in a row in this last 12-game stretch. That could really be uh, – really dangerous for this team, but I think they're fine, and I think this last rest um, will really help them uh, push them into the playoffs. Arizona 8-2-0 and in their last 10, yep. so they've played well the last 10 games. Um, big. This is, this is kind of a big deal because it hasn't really been this way all season. San Jose, Calgary, uh, Vegas, Arizona all have played 70 games now. Everybody finally caught up to the Knights. They were so, they were two, three, four games even ahead of a lot of these teams and games played. So it was kind of hard to look at the numbers and go, yeah, they're, they're four up. This team has three, four games in hand, so you don't know how that's going to play out. Finally, now, especially with this break the Knights have had, everybody's starting to, to kind of even up. Nashville's now played 71 games and is only two points ahead of the Knights. We talked about that last week, how important it is mm -hmm. for the Knights to, at the very least, leapfrog Winnipeg, who's at 84 points right now, um, played 69 games, and Nashville, who's at 83 points, playing 71 games leapfrog those two teams so that if you do get to the Western Conference final, you will have home ice advantage against assuming it is one of those two teams. And obviously the teams below them you'd have, uh, you'd have home ice against. So it is still important for them to climb in those standings. And if you're just joining us, well, first of all, thank you, but Matt had some quote-unquote breaking news. Ben Bishop may not be in net uh, tomorrow night when the Golden Knights uh, head to Dallas, probably in Dallas right now, uh, to take on the Stars. Yep. Um, I think we should get to some pizza, Matt. Let's do it. Yeah. So Grimaldi's again stepping up and they've been they've been great. I know I'm, you want it. You know, I'm so glad and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name any other pizza chains, you know, but thank God it's not one of those other chains that you're like, you know the pizza's bad oh, but it's but it's cheap, so you're like you get it. You know what I mean? Thankfully they're not on, on the show no. because <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> it's like the uh it is really uh, I mean, arguably the best pizza in town. Missing a couple pieces. Uh, it is missing a, a couple slices. So they brought us their traditional Am pepperoni, actually four cheese. There we go. Um, four cheese pizza with Look some pepperoni on there and the Grimaldi sauce on there um, as well. Again, five locations. Uh, Palazzo, Fashion Show, um, the one on Eastern. South Rainbow is the one that hooked us up here. And I can't remember the fifth. I'm sure it's on the west side somewhere um, off the top of my head. But look, it looks like Pac-Man now. So we'll throw it up there. On Pie Day, we're having pizza. So it just it's the old classic, man. Four cheese. Pepperoni. I love it. Oh. Can't beat the pepperoni. I love it. We have the prosciutto, uh, prosciutto pizza. I can't even say prosciutto it Prosciutto and arugula prosciutto. Thank last you. week with um, a little garlic, shaved garlic. That was a good one. I think there's a little goat cheese on, mm -hmm. on this, which I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of, but on this pie, it works because it's not it's overpowering. It's working for me, man. It's, it's not working overpowering. For me. Matt's on his diet, again, focusing on Tough Mudder. I shouldn't be eating it at all because I'm like, <laughs> my body revolts if I put anything <laughs> bad in it. But this is a great excuse for us to uh, to indulge. I'm loving something it, man. Bad. I'm um, lo are you already? Oh my God, we're dipping into the cheesecake yeah. now. And they brought in cheesecakes uh, for us. Which one do you have? So we got the banana cream cheesecake here. Yeah. If you've ever had banana cream pie, you know what that's like. Uh, and then this. And is then coconut. that is coconut. A little chocolate yeah. there. That is like the. Uh, she told me it's like the Girl Scout cookie. Yeah. Which one is that? Okay. Somebody help me out Samosa. with the Girl Scout. Samoas. Samoas. Yeah. There you go. Samoas. I don't know the Girl Scout. Which I'm glad I got well. the coconut one. I'm not the biggest banana guy, so. No? All right. We're on Pie Day. See what this cheesecake's all about. I've been trying to tell you, John. That's good. Kind of ridiculous. It's right? not too heavy, right? The, no. the, the, I'm sure they make it fresh. I would assume they make mm -hmm. it fresh. Um, not heavy at all. Cream cheese is great. Um, not about too it. sugary either, which oh. I'm big on. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of sugar in it, but it doesn't taste too it's sweet. It's the most sugar I've had in 10 days, dude. Yeah. That's good stuff. My wife's having a heart attack. She wants a banana cream. Sorry, Matt already put it in his mouth. That's so that, right. She that can, ruins she can that. Have the rest. I'm done. Um, me, you said me. I don't know what Muffy's saying about that. One bite. Everybody <laughs> knows the rules. Hey, we're not we're not ripping off bar stool. All right, we're not. From all these is the Benz at uh, the palm. The Benz. I, I'm reading your name and as um, while I'm reading your comment. So that's not good. The comments are flooding in. Best comment so far. Let's see here. Hey, stop arguing. Get back to me. You said I had best comment. I get the pizza. Muffy, we That's decided at the end of the That's show. That's pretty good. All right? That is pretty good. So Muffy's the leader in the clubhouse now. Um, you see, are ahead. See what's happening here, John? RIP to those who haven't eaten. 
Yeah, thanks, Danny. Thanks for hopping on. Uh, we'd love to have you so on the I show know, here, it's delicious. Danny. Those of you um, that haven't eaten yet, at some point. it's delicious. Yeah. Uh, oh, Vince is on. Hey, Vince. Caramel coconut cheesecake. It's great. All this stuff's great. Yeah, I'll be taking <laughs> a bite of that later. Uh, thanks again to Grimaldi's. Ah, uh, all right. Back to business, John. Are you sure? Because I'm going to keep on. Yeah, you got a mouthful of food, yeah. so I don't know that you can get back to business. So we thought about, you know, running Rebels News. But, man, they are taking a backseat to everything. Like, we talked about it last week, and people were revolting. And I know people revolt against the Raiders, but it's just because it's the Raiders, yeah, right? People hate the Raiders. But the Runner Rebels built are... built-in hatred. It's not good right now. Um, so we'll get to Runner Rebels in a little bit. They're taking the third wheel um, behind the Oakland, soon-to-be Las Vegas Raiders, currently in Oakland. One more year, man. Did they sign the contract to stay in Oakland? I think they did. Yes, I think they're good uh, now. Locked in. So here, here's the deal. Antonio Brown, Trent Brown, LaMarcus Joyner, Tyrell Williams, mm -hmm. four big signings. You have four draft picks in the top 35, right? Yes. Um, Matt, they're, they're a contender. And when they get to Vegas, they're going to be really good. They look good offensively. They look better offensively. Uh, they just released Jordy Nelson. Doesn't mean that he won't be a Raider next year. There's talk that they may re-sign him for a lesser price. He was due a roster bonus tomorrow of over $3 million. So they cut him today. Uh, we'll see if they keep him around. But Antonio Brown now being there changes everything. Uh, along with along with Tyrell Williams, he's 6'4". He runs a 4'4", 40. Uh, this kid is lightning fast. Yeah, let's so let's take a macro look as you as you did, and then we'll touch on him individually. But are they? I mean, I guess to cut to the chase, are they a playoff team next year with the draft picks combined with these signings? Currently, no. Yeah, because you don't know what the draft picks are going to be. If you look at this team last year, they were one of the worst, if not the worst, defensive team in the NFL. Um, they gave up more points than anybody in the NFL last year. Their point differential was terrible last year. They needed help, not just offensively, which they've gained now, but defensively, they need a, they need a ton of help. Um, would not be surprised to see them go defense, defense, defense in the first round and maybe look for a top wide receiver early in the second round, pick 35. They could even go late first round with that, uh, that receiver pick, but they need defensive help. They need depth at the defensive tackle position. They need edge rushers. Uh, they're still in the running for a couple of free agents out there for, for uh, defensive end, so they may get some more help there. But they have to address their defensive issues. Um, signing Joyner was big because he there's a, there's a safety that's been with the Rams for four years. He was franchised by the Rams last season. He's, he's, a, he's a good safety. Is he a big, huge, great safety? No, he's a smaller guy. He's 5'8", but the kid can play safety. Um, like he brings guys. toughness to the position. He, he knows how to play the game, uh, and I think he's going to help Carl Joseph out there a lot. Um, you, you still have Gary and Connolly. You still have Darrell Worley. In the secondary, I'm sure they'll look to add there as well, but they need help up front and at linebacker. Uh, do not be surprised if those first four picks all go to defensive help. All right, So and that, that makes sense, complete sense to me. So with the two new receivers, two top two targets for Derek Carr, Carr, I, I mean, a lot of people are critical of this guy um, last season. You know, I'm, I think he's a great guy to bring into Vegas just from his personality, but I think you know a little bit more about his skill set. I mean, I believe in him, but this is going to work, right, with D.C.? Yeah, we've seen what Carr can do with weapons. When he had Crabtree and he had Cooper and he had time to throw the ball, he was an MVP candidate. Let's not forget that. That was also the only year of his career that he was in a system for the second season. So this will be the second time in his career that he will have a system, mm -hmm. consistent system, for the second season. Carr has the ability to make all the throws. We've seen him make all the throws. He just needs weapons, and he needs time. Um, Trent Brown, a huge pickup on the offensive line. He played right tackle when he was with uh, the 49ers, was traded to the Patriots last season, played left tackle, barely gave up a pressure even during the playoffs, uh, was lights out against the Chargers and the Chiefs, which – you happen to see both of those teams twice a year, every year. But you have Colton Miller over there at the left side. You drafted him the first round last season. Uh, he, he, worked, he was there all season long, fought through injury, played at left tackle. I don't, I don't know that they're going to move him off of that spot. Do you really want him to try to learn right tackle now coming into this new season? You keep him there. You solidify the right side, which has been a disaster for 10 years. They have not been able to solidify the right side of that offensive line for the last 10 years. Putting Trent Brown over there. Locks that side up. Colton Miller healthy. You saw what he can do. 
You have your bookend tackles, which is what you need to protect Derek Carr. You still have Gabe Jackson in the middle. Uh, they traded Kalicho Assembly, so they're going to need to fill that guard spot there. You still have uh, Rodney Hudson at center. This line is going to be much better this year. Carr's going to have a lot more time this year than he's had the last couple of so years. So Matt says buy-in. Uh, let me talk about the numbers. Uh, going into the offseason, how much? Eight, 70, 70? 74. I think right around <laughs> just below 74. So they've clearly eaten up a pretty good chunk of that. So Antonio Brown's contract, three years, $50 million guaranteed, up to $54 million. Um, Trent Brown, the largest contract ever to an offensive lineman, four-year contract, $66 million. 36.25 guaranteed. Joiner, four years, 42 million, 16.7 million guaranteed. And then Williams, um, it's four years, 44 million. It sounds like a ton of money. Uh, 22 million dollars guaranteed when you add this all up. But they still, they still have, still have room. They that still doesn't have room. sound like they it adds to up pay, to 70. They have to pay draft picks. Yeah. There's still going to be a couple more free agents. I mean, that sounds moves. like about 30 million uh, ish uh, yeah. still left over. And Mayock talked about it in a press conference yesterday with Antonio Brown. He said they're still making moves in free agency. That's not dead. Uh, I want to address the comment here by Dana. Should have paid Mac. They offered Mac. Uh, let's not forget that they offered Mac what close to 20 million dollars, right around 20 million dollars. They offered Mac the money. He wanted to be the highest paid defensive player. He wanted that guaranteed money. And for whatever reason, they weren't willing to move off of that. But what you got out of that now is the ability to make these kinds of signings because you're not tied up with that Khalil Mack money. You now have more freedom. You can make these kind of free agency moves. These are moves. all pretty short-term, too, for right. your deals. So, I mean, that's, that's the wheelhouse you want to be in. And right? couple that with the picks they got because you now have three first-round picks this season, one of those being because of the Mack trade. You have another first-rounder next season due to the Mack trade. Along with the Cowboy trade, you have a first-rounder. And you've got that that uh, high second round pick. So, yeah, it would have been nice to have Mac in house, but would you have had the flexibility, had the room to make these other moves? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, right. things can always be done. Uh, you manipulate the salary cap, you move guys around, you you move money into bonuses, things like that. That does happen, but not signing Mac isn't overall the worst thing that this team's done because they're they're now you're seeing you're seeing the process, you're seeing them start to build. You're seeing Gruden's vision. Mike Mayock, obviously, in his ear, helping him out. They're making – I mean, they just brought over the best wide receiver in football. And let's be honest. This, yep. this kid is yep. crazy dynamic. I never really liked OBJ. I mean, he's dynamic. Don't get me wrong. But I think if you ta went to to me before the trade, even before it happened, who's the top receiver in the NFL, I'd say Antonio Brown. Bar, yeah. bar uh, or along, along with DeAndre Hopkins. Right. I mean, those three guys right there are, are three of the best in the league. But – Nobody has better numbers over the last seven years than Antonio Brown does. Um, so let's talk about Brown a little bit more. And again, I, you know, Rich Giacovino, our great producer, I think I want us to make like an animation that's like water cooler alert. Because I'm looking out for you guys at home again. If you're not avid sports fans, here's some water cooler talk for you as well. And that is the Las Vegas Raiders are going to be a really good team. When you get a, a signing crew like this, especially offensively, uh, the team's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And just if you're, if you're kind of, Wishy-washy on the Raiders. Um, uh, now's the time to buy in. You see what Mayock's doing. You see how dynamic they are going to be uh, offensively. I want to talk about a running back here in a second. Real quick, let me just address Dana. Oh, okay. Uh, she did say when do you, he was an MVP, defensive MVP. Where do you, when do you ever have that? I completely agree with that. Mack was a phenomenal player. I didn't want to see Mack go. It's, it's too bad he's gone. But, again, he had one winning season with Khalil Mack being the defensive beast that he is. One winning season. That's it. They needed more help than just retaining their defensive end. They're getting it now. And hopefully with this draft and the, the stockpile of dra draft picks, they can help replace his production and then some. And, and, and they need to. And I guess the point being here, Mac was great for the Bears. He was. Did I mean, he win him a playoff he game? He's phenomenal. Did he win him a playoff game? Nope. Didn't. Their kicker lost them a playoff game. Unfortunately. Right? So they made it to the first round, and then they lost based on a kicker. Right? Yep. I can't remember the game. They didn't score that many points. Um, you know, so can is he a difference maker? Sure. And you look at some of the Bears games early in the season. I believe his first game with the Bears was game oh, four it was or insane. five. Yeah. Insane. Two fumble recovery's, a touchdown. Yeah, it was I mean, insane. I mean he was a difference maker there, but that doesn't mean to he's Chicago. gonna win a playoff game. Um Antonio right. Brown. What does he bring besides skill? Brings excitement. Yeah. I know he brings a little bit of drama. Um, but again, Somebody commented earlier, can't remember who it was, first jersey, Antonio Brown. Yeah, That's of course. That's what they're going to buy. I mean, if you're, if you're a Vegas so you're, you're a Las Vegas resident. Maybe you have an NFL team. Maybe you don't. But the Raiders are coming, and you're going to buy in. 
This is going to be your adopted team. Maybe it's your second team, whatever you want to call it. Maybe you're just a fair weather football fan. You finally have a team of your own because they're coming to Vegas. Who is the one guy on that roster now that you look at and go, man, I got to have his jersey? Maybe Derek Carr because everybody likes the quarterback, right? But maybe you're not a big Derek Carr guy. You got a DC Antonio jersey. Antonio Brown brings that. He is so electric. He's so dynamic. You can put him on punt return. Uh, he's a threat to break one every time he touches the ball as a receiver. I mean, this this kid is – he's lights out. He's lights out. And, and – yeah, there's drama. There's always drama. Receivers bring drama. It's the diva position in the NFL. It's just what it is. It's not going to disrupt a locker room. I mean, this this team is building. He's coming to Las Vegas. Think about all the hype that's going to be surrounding this team when they get to this city. Brand new facilities, brand new stadium, brand new city. Addition to their fan base. I mean, this is why would you not want to be excited for something like this. This kid's going to ball out for the next Oh, uh, your dad's coming in hot. Don't you think it's a little rude to be eating pizza as we sit here and watch you guys? Go to Grimaldi's. Call uh, him up right now. Absolutely not. Head down there. Tell him Sports Adrenaline sent you. I'm sure they'll give you a free slice of cheesecake. And if they don't, just insist on it um, for <laughs> Pi Day. Pi Day. Pi Day. Again, it's 314. Pie day. What are they doing at running back, Matt? Are they going to draft somebody? Um, I'm very I'm And then very we'll, we'll touch on this, and then we'll move on to Rebels here. Very curious to see what happens with Chris Warren the third, uh, and how they utilize him going forward because I think I think he can be good. We talked about it last week. We saw him in the preseason. Um, there were flashes. It is preseason. It's very vanilla defense that you're going against, but you saw skill there. He looked good. Is Marshawn Lynch coming back? I thought for sure he was done after yep. last season. Yep. Um, I'm on record as saying he'll never play again. The fact that they're staying in the Coliseum changes that. Potentially, he could be back. I would love to see Marshawn come back for one last year, especially because it is Oakland's farewell tour. Uh, Doug Martin looks like he's going to be back in house. And then uh, Jalen Richard. DeAndre Washington could be the odd man out, assuming everybody's healthy. Uh, I would like to see them go after a running back in the draft somewhere. Don't reach. I don't think there's anybody early on in the draft that you're going to reach for. There's no Saquon Barkley in this year's draft. But they're going to need help there. They were they were so close on, on getting Le'Veon Bell. Uh, but... Which this and this is great on Mayock and Gruden. They stuck to their guns. This is our offer. This is what we're going to pay. This is what we're doing, and we're not moving off of it. And the Jets came in just a little bit higher. Keep talking, because I'm going to eat and, the cheesecake. Yeah, go well. right ahead. You better save at least a bite of that. I'm going to be a little upset. Oh, you want? I might that? have a little brawl my, right here on this. My germs desk. are right, but okay. Um, but um, you have to Nothing admire the fact that they weren't adrenaline. they weren't willing to to overextend their reach mm-hmm. there and go after Le'Veon Bell. Running back is a funny position in today's NFL. It it's a position it that you can kind of plug and play with certain guys. I and mean, when we see the Patriots do it all the time, a lot of teams do it all the time. Uh, man, John is really hungry it's tonight. It's ridiculous. Just I, keep talking. Don't, I, mind, <laughs> don't mind me, audience. I'm, yeah. I, was, I was a little leery of it last week. We talked about, you know, do you want to pay a guy at running back that much money when it's such a tough position, one of the toughest positions in all the sports physically to play? And they didn't. They didn't reach. Right. So good for them. They stuck to their guns. He's a Jet now. But, um, yeah, we'll see what they come up with. I, I, I hope I hope Marshawn Lynch is back. I, don't, I still don't believe in Doug Martin, man. I'm just not no, a Doug not Martin at all. guy. Not at all. I think his best days are far behind him. Um, I'd put Chris, Chris Warren, Warren ahead. On, I'd Chris put him Warren. ahead well, of Well, again, we, gotta uh, see, we have to see him in, regular, yeah. in, in a regular season game. Defense, it's, it's so vanilla in the preseason. I mean, there's you guys don't don't stunt the way they normally do. The blitz packages are very soft. Uh, you just don't see the same kind of defense that you're going to see in the regular season. So it's easy for a guy to look great in those positions. Um, but if he can do that, if he can have another really good preseason, make the active roster, and show us that in week one, week two, then maybe we have something there. Um, Dana making a good point. Bell, because he has so many touches, right? And he does. He's a workhorse. He does. And he, he's had a year off. He has, and yeah. he's he's such a he's such a dual threat coming out of the backfield. But yep. I mean, with the receivers they have now, when you bring in you bring in Brown, you bring in Williams. Um, we'll see we'll see if they bring back Jordy Nelson. Seth Roberts is still there. Marcel Aitman's still there. I'm kind of surprised Roberts is Mike still Aitman. there because he you cut mm-hmm. him and you save 5.5 million in the cap. But um, I I I think they're going to utilize those weapons a lot. Um, we're giving away if you're new to tune or just tuning in. $25 gift card to Grimaldi's for the best comment of the day. I think it was it Dana or was it uh, Muffy? I think it was Muffy so far who's been demanding uh, the pizza. Um, she's winning so far. Uh, yep, Dana, we did mention that uh, they cut uh, Jordy Nelson today. 
They yep. might bring him back, is what Matt's saying, because uh, he was owed a three three and a half million dollar roster bonus. Yeah, today. roster bonus yeah. if uh, if they didn't cut him before today. If he was on the the roster tomorrow, so. So, and I'd like to see Jordy back. He's he's a veteran presence. Right. He's not your number one, not your number two anymore. I mean, you bump him down to your number three receiver. You're not paying your number three receiver three and a half million, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and I brought this up before he came on. You know, comparing Jordy Nelson to an Antonio Brown, saying, "Oh, Brown might be like Jordy Nelson in three years, but he doesn't have a blown out ACL, no. um, and it's just his skill set is you know." He's so ben, Big Ben is Big Ben, but he's not Aaron Rodgers, okay? He's I think, so much better than yeah. Jordy Nelson, though. Jordy Nelson's right. a really good receiver. Yeah. He's not going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But when you have Aaron Rodgers, the he has right now. I, I could sit here and say I like Aaron Rodgers better as a quarterback than Tom Brady. I mean, he hasn't won nearly as much as Tom Brady, but I just think skill set and accuracy and um, just his dynamic ability, I'd yeah. make the argument that he's a better quarterback than Tom and Antonio Brown, I mean, let's be honest, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Right. Jordy Nelson right. probably not ever going to get in. So mm -hmm. it's a huge upgrade there. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Runner Rebels now. So let's talk about, well, actually, sorry, before we get to that, I uh, do want to talk about uh, our draft pick of the week, Bad Beat Brewing. Um, wait, 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 wait. So pizza, beer, cheesecake. I got the IPA. You right. want to switch? No, this is good. I got the Hef uh, available in Smith's. I think Speedy Mart's all over town. So it's a local brewery. Diet's going all to hell today, You can John. also go to the Pint on a, if you're on the west side. I think they do $3 drafts um, of Bad Beat Brewing, which is awesome. Um, the Hef's awesome. I mean, it really is. I can't really drink anymore because uh, the, 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 the wheat kills me. I'm a gluten-free guy. but Yeah, that's not good for you then, man. And then we've got a new sponsor this week, Haul It. H-A-W-L-I-T.com. Yes. Um, new local service. If you need something moved, go to hollit.com, H-A-W-L-I-T.com. Um, also, if you have a truck and it's sitting around and you want to make some extra income, you should go to H-A-W-L-I-T.com, Hollit. Really cool idea, right? Uh, it's funny. I was, I was talking to somebody at work not long ago. And they had to move a couch. Had to get this couch moved. Didn't have a truck. Uh, finally found somebody with a truck. Tried to move it themselves. Something fell off the truck and broke. Big pain in the butt. Really cool idea here with Hollett. You go to their website, um, just jump on there, say you need a truck, and what you're getting is not just a truck. You're getting a guy with his truck to help you move or to not help you to move whatever it is you need to move. Uh, you go in there, you submit your job, whatever your job may be. Uh, take a picture of what it is you're moving. Let them know you're on the second floor, you're on the third floor, whatever the case is, where you're at and where you need to go what it's going to be moved to, and they will come over, pick up whatever it is, and move it for you. Uh, range of truck sizes. I mean, you're, you're not just looking at a pickup truck to move a couch. Uh, you can move your whole house with these guys. They'll come help you out. Really cool service, uh, kind of like a like an Uber style for, for moving. Uh, cool. Well, thanks for Hollett for hopping on board again, H-A-W-L-I-T.com. Uh, quick, quick twitch and speed, Dana. Dana's getting deep. A-B, quick twitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I, I love I love the terminology that the, the smart people in sports use. We're not we're not there yet. I don't I don't One call day. it quick twitch. One day. I think it, it sounds a little cliche if I do it. Furniture doesn't fit well and <laughs> yeah, and as there there you go, exact reason why you might want to call our No, folks but you know, you could open that back it. window and maybe put somebody's skis in there or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> Rich Jacovino from the booth. Rich, the producer, did not get a slice yet. To be fair, we offered Rich a slice. We said, have some. Rich is working the show. too hard. And he's like, no, no. Mine's sitting here, by the way. I am getting full. I'm slowing down, so that's good. Uh, let's talk running Rebels. Here we go. All right. The season is over. Rebels. Mercifully. Rebels. Mercifully. It's over. Uh, has Marvin Menzies coached his last game as running Rebel head coach? By the way, they lose to San Diego State. Well, I, it's like the final doesn't even matter to me. What was it, 63-56? Well, let's, let's talk about the game real quick before we jump into Menzies and his tentative future with the oh, team. Oh, do we want to do that? I was just going to talk about that. But, yeah, let's talk about the once, game. Once again, this team cannot play offense. First round, this quarterfinals, was... sorry. Quarterfinals against San Diego State. Third time these two teams are playing this season. Yeah. San Diego State wins twice. Blowout in San Diego. Close game at UNLV that the Rebels lose basically in the final seconds because they couldn't run an inbounds play and took a three at the buzzer. Yeah. But beyond that, uh, great game. Um, and then they lose here in the quarterfinals. I, again, I think it was by eight points. But it doesn't even – it's like a moot point to me. 63-55 final. Yeah. It was 47-47 with three, four, four minutes, minutes to go. go. Yep. Uh, and UNLV just completely fell apart. You read apart. my notes? I got it right here. A couple I, of – Three to end the half, Nick Blair bites on the pump fake. 
Oh, the, the pump the fake. The pump fake I just wanted to disgusting. get it out there so you wouldn't beat me to the hustle could not, uh, on that. Could not believe he fell for that pump. The entire yeah. arena said, how do you fall for that? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with a kid who's known for pump faking. Uh, just just really bad down the stretch. Took really bad shots. No Robotham. Um <laughs> I don't. I don't want to kill this kid, man. He's a He's senior. Played his last game at UNLV. Senior point guard had a pretty decent season, especially in conference play with UNLV. But man, did this kid look like a freshman tonight, John? Um, bad play after bad play. He only ended up with four points, I think. Uh, made one. I think it was one of seven from three. Just, just terrible down the stretch. San Diego State hits a big three pointer to go up by three late in the game. And here comes Robotham, right down the court, doesn't run any offense, takes a contested off-balance three-pointer. He's no, nowhere close to making the shot. And one of San seven. Diego State is off and running. One, one of seven, seven, four yeah. points. I mean, just just not a good game from your And all the card. shots that he took were all threes. Yeah, and they were all horrible. Let me tell you, one for, 0 for 11 to start the game from three, and I don't know that four of those shots drew iron. They were some of the worst shots I've seen this team take, and this is a team that takes a lot of really bad shots. Um, four for 22 overall from deep. They refused to get away from the three-point ball. Mari Hardy had about a 10-minute stretch where he could not be stopped getting to the rim. The last five minutes, I don't think he had the ball twice. Just they they w- he completely tied it at 47. went away. I know he was the one that tied it at 47. They completely and went away that. from. And I'm sure I'm sure San Diego State made some changes defensively, but that kid couldn't be stopped getting to the rim. You've got to keep feeding him the ball, and instead they're they're settling for jumpers. They're turning the ball over. Uh, just again, really bad down the stretch. Ronnie's on board. He comes right. He comes right out of the woodwork when we start talking about something he doesn't like. Ronnie's there. Uh, Ron, you should have came. You should t- uh, tuned in earlier. Why weren't you on earlier? Maybe you were. I think you were just being silent. Maybe he was eating some Grimaldi's pizza. Uh, so the Nick Blair pump fake was killer to me. Right? They were. I think they were down five at that point, or down four, and then mm-hmm. uh, fouled. They make all three uh, free throws. That's a ball and then game. They're down seven. Yeah, yeah, and that was that. I think that was about with. Uh, Two minutes to go. So Rebel season ends. Um, excuse me. A little Grimaldi. Well, actually, it was the bad beat that came up there. Uh, 17-14. Or excuse me, 17 and 14 this season. Uh, finish above 500 in Mountain West play. Uh, let me give, actually, sorry, I had some stats from the game that are a little confounding to me. San Diego State, a league best, 31-14 all-time in the Mountain West tournament. UNLV 27-16 and 16 in the tournament. These two teams have met more times in the tournament than any two teams. Aztecs 9-2. In 11 games, Aztecs have won nine of them in the Mountain West Tournament. They own UNLV, certainly as of late. Overall, SDSU has won 15 of its last 16 games against the Rebels. Uh, that's overall, so including conference tournament. Do you have the overall series there? Uh, no, this is all tournament stuff. Overall what is it? series yeah. is now tied at 36 games apiece. Ten years ago, UNLV was 20 games ahead of this team. It is now tied at 36 apiece. That is how bad UNLV has been for the last... Ten plus years against San Diego State. You know what I had to do today because it was actually the game was on at the same time as my sports and media class at mm-hmm. UNLV. Perfect timing, so of course we watched the game. Great use of classwork. What um, else would you? Actually, do? the students loved it, so clearly uh, I'm a great instructor at UNLV. Um, but after the game was over, then I'm like, you want to see a real comeback, Curtis Terry, 2005. Oh. Yeah. I had to go back to 2005. Unbelievable. <laughs> Down Wait, 10, 20 seconds to go. I don't think that that video exists anymore because San Diego YouTube. State oh, yeah, says it doesn't exist. basketball wasn't a thing <laughs> That's way right. back then. No, but talk about That was one of the best. Uh, they were down 10, uh, 18 point something to go, uh, and then Curtis Terry goes off. Um, San not Diego just, State can't make Terry. a free throw. It was Terry. Odarte Blankson, Blankson made some yeah. shots. Um, and then uh, Blasson game, was he the point guard? Uh I think so. Ten. No, Terry ten. hit the three Dalron, that sent it no, to overtime. Not Dalron Johnson. I think Dalron was on that team, though. Um, I'm just throwing Terry out hit the three that now. sent it to yep. overtime, then they won it in overtime. Yep. Down, down ten with less than 20 seconds to go. But you got to go back uh, 14 years yep. uh, to, it seems like, remember. Before college <laughs> basketball started, if you ask you a San Diego State yeah. fan. Uh, let's see. Um, I had one more stat for you. Sorry, I'm opening tabs here. San Diego State shot just 29.8% from the field. 17 to 57, the lowest shooting percentage for a team with a win in the Mountain West Conference tournament since 2006 when San Diego State shot 28.8%. They beat, not UNLV, but Wyoming. Wyoming. <laughs> we have some video from Marvin Menzies here. Before we get to that, real quick, Menzies was, he addressed that, that point. It's not on this video, but he addressed that point. Um, 
seemed extremely confused by that entire situation. And that's it's one of the things, and I'll get to you after you see this video here. Menzies just, it, it, too many things in, in his three seasons at UNLV come across as though it's the first time he's ever seen any of these things. And he's been a coach for how many decades now? But he addressed the keeping a team under 30% 30, uh, 30 shooting and losing the game. And he was dumbfounded. He had never heard of anything like that before, never seen that before. His, his demeanor, his body language, I, it feels like he knows he's out the door. We'll see if that's the case. But let's jump to this video here. It's Marvin Menzies uh, at the press conference following today's loss to San Diego State. Hey, Marvin, is, is the most frustrating part for you is just, you know, you, a basket here, a basket there, you probably win the game, and, and just all those missed opportunities? Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Just a collective uh, set of emotions, you know, from seeing Noah and Chris leaving to just feeling bad for the guys, you know, not uh, playing well offensively. We just didn't put it all together. We, we did some things, some really good things, but, you know, Man, these, these, uh, these last games of the season are always tough. There's a lot of people already eliminated. Um, and, you know, we're one of those teams now. It's a lot of lessons, a lot of opportunity to grow and learn from uh, not just your season, but how to handle uh, defeat when you lose, too. So we just want to make sure the guys stay together and stay a brotherhood and, uh, you know, pick each other up and do the right things. Going forward, we're got a, a great bunch of kids, man. Class action, huh? So, anything else? Okay, thank you for your time, coach. All right, that looks like a guy who's on the way out the door. Yeah, personally, yeah. I mean, he looked like he was in tears right there. He was mm -hmm. choking back. His body language is, and it's like this a lot. It, it seems like like Marvin doesn't handle adversity all that well in front of the media. Um, he always seems to be unsure of what to say or how to handle it or, you know, what's coming up next. And this here just looked like a, like a farewell speech. I hope the guys stay together, stay a brotherhood. Uh, some great guys in that locker room. Uh, I mean, yet to be determined, obviously. Desiree Reed francois has uh, some choices to make. Menzies obviously was not her hire, uh, much like Tony Sanchez was not. And Sanchez won that big game at the end of the season to, to get the cannon back and somehow managed to get himself another year. Menzies didn't do that. Um, it, it amazes me, John. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, UNLV is the only team in conference that didn't beat a single team above them in the standings. Think about that. Not a single team above them in the standings that they beat. Even San Jose State got a win, and since they only had one in conference, it had to be against somebody above them. Every team in this conference managed to beat one team above them. UNLV could not do it. What does that tell you? They're, I mean, they're just... About as average as it gets. I told you right here last week on this show, UNLV was not going to win in the conference tournament. I'm not surprised. No, no I, I don't no, think anybody I, no, else is no, surprised. I, I, <laughs> no, I said the exact opposite. I said they'd win the first He game. looked and yeah. sounded defeated. Yeah, and as is, is on yeah. point there. I like that. That's contender for uh, top comment um, because she's spot on. Um, also, did somebody ask him about the pump fakes? I think somebody asked him about the pump fakes. Like, why does your team always bite on pump fakes? Yeah, and <laughs> they all looked very confused. It was uh, Amari Hardy was up there, and yeah. um, Joel Tomboy was up there. And they just kind of blanket question to all yeah. three of yeah. them, you know, the pump fake thing. And, and none of them really had an answer. Um, <laughs> just, Tomboy just gave credit yeah. to San Diego State player for, I just for being really good. But they know the people notice. We've been talking about that all season. Uh, they've they been biting on every pump fakes. single pump fake. Yeah, uh, Tiffany thought he was going to start to cry. Okay, so is Marvin Menzies is done. That's what you're saying. If I had to, if I had to no, make a bet here, okay, maybe. If you're, yeah, if, you're, if you're saying put money on it, which way are you leaning? I think he knows he's done. There, it, it, just the way he came off there, it's like he's been talking to to Desiree in the back, and she's like, "Listen, you better go out and make some noise in this tournament, or we'll see you later." They didn't make any noise. All right, so who, who, they, who are they hiring then? Don't, don't tell me it's you get rid of Menzies to hire some middle-of-the-road coach that's like a young up-and-comer. They have to hire somebody who's going to inject two things into this program. First and foremost, you have to win. 
right? You have to bring a winner into this program. Secondly, you have to bring excitement. Who brings excitement to this program? Obviously, Rick Pitino. Whether it's good excitement or bad excitement, people will be talking. If Rick Pitino signed with UNLV tomorrow, nobody would even care about conference tournaments for six hours because all they would talk about is the fact that Rick Pitino is A, coming back to the United States to coach, B, coming back to college, and C, going to Vegas and UNLV. That's all anybody in college basketball would be talking about. That's pure excitement. Um, Thad Mata's name has been run out there. Final Fours, Big Ten Championships. Um, maybe not excitement, right? Does he bring that right. buzz that other people bring? Lon Kruger 2.0. Probably 0. not, right. But what did Lon Kruger do? That's right. He won. By year three, he was in the Sweet 16, and nobody cared about what excitement he brought to the table. They were winning, and that's all anybody wants to see. So you might not get that immediate buzz with a, with a Thad Mata-type signing, but you're going to get wins, and that's what this program needs. Um, Steve Alford's name has been thrown out there, former New Mexico coach, UCLA coach. I think that brings a lot of buzz, especially in this conference because of what he did with New Mexico. And we know he can win at this level. He didn't really succeed at UCLA, but he ran the Mountain West for years. Uh, Dana saying Rick P, but I believe earlier Dana may have said Petrino, as in Bobby Petrino, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" So I think threw, threw I think we know. In there, I, think. I think yeah, I think uh, Kruger was a great recruiter. Well, he never got any powerhouse recruits, Dana. Um, no, but Kruger was a phenomenal. And still yeah, is a phenomenal coach. And by the way, his uh, bubble team, Oklahoma, this year, uh, I think, but they have a pretty good shot to get an at large. Um, into the NC2A tournament. I take that right now. I mean, Rebel fans complaining that they're a bubble team, you know, uh, back when Lon Kruger was head coach. And, yeah, they missed out on a few years, and those watch parties didn't go the right way. But, uh, again, you'd You're rather, probably looking at another you'd year rather take that than a 17-14 record. NIT, CIT, yeah. GIT, whatever other ones are yeah, out I there. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I'm not going to pick on who they would potentially hire, but I think, I think after this loss in the first round, uh, shooting horrendously, tied with four minutes to go. You look at the pieces and you look at the season as a whole. I mean, again, I don't think it'd surprise anybody if uh, Marvin Menzies coached his last game here. But, uh, again, this is gut reaction. I'd rather have Marvin Menzies next year than some unknown quantity that can't put butts. In. If you're going to get somebody that doesn't put butts in the seats, then just stick with Marvin well, for another year. They can't do that. They can't right. make another lateral but hire, which oh, is what Marvin Menzies was. But this was. is UNLV, Matt. I mean, you know, they've done it time and time again. And Desiree has Desiree not made has a big not. She hasn't made a big hire yet, no, though. And this, and she could this, drop the ball just like anybody to, else at UNLV needs to be has. The one, right? yeah. So let me ask you, John, what, what do you think? of Marvin Menzies' tenure so far at UNLV, and do you think he deserves another year? I didn't think he got a fair shake from the start. Behind the eight ball, year one, right, 11 wins that year, all-time worst record at UNLV, had no kids to recruit. Right. Year two, a lot better. Um, and you're talking about uh, what could have been, uh, shoot, and I forgot, that's how, I forgot his name, Brandon, Brandon McCoy. McCoy. Right, you forget about him, brought him in. Very forgettable. That team, uh, awesome to start mm -hmm. the season, non-conference play. A lot of fun to watch. Conference season implodes. I put that on Marvin Menzies on the conference season. Um, and then year three, he can't do anything. What I, what I saw was, is a good, and I keep on going back to this, I like the kids that he's brought in. I like Bryce Hamilton. I like Trey Woodbury. I like Tom Way. I like Jonathan Chomwich Chua. I like all of those guys. Now, can they win you a conference tournament? Probably not. No. Can you be competitive in the Mountain West? Yes. Okay. I don't know about that. No. Were they competitive this year? Well, well, they were a five seed in a bad conference. They're also losing their two senior guards, mm -hmm. two of their better players. Yep. I mean, Which, it's Clyburn wasn't good. Sorry, again, Clyburn, I didn't Clyburn think he was good was until the best this season. Player on the floor this year, absolutely. For he had a this year. phenomenal year. Last year, really I didn't good. think so. And he was good in today's game. Finished yeah. with 19 points. Mm -hmm. uh, hit some really big shots. I mean, that's kind of what he did in his tenure at UNLV. But back to Menzies. Menzies, this this is what you get. This is what you're going to yeah. get out of Marvin yeah. Menzies. And I, I, this is but don't hire was. the same person, no. right? But and if, is... they, if, they, if that's what happens, and you bring in a coach that can compete for a middle-of-the-road Mountain West Conference finish, I'd be, I'd be livid. I'd be like, why did you even do this? I'm starting over again and instead continuing with Marvin and just letting him go another season and see where he takes this team. They have to make a big splash. My point, though, my point though, is, is this is what Marvin is, is why, why would anybody expect more? Why would anybody expect him to suddenly turn this around mm -hmm. and become this big winner here at UNLV? He's never been that coach. Uh, he, he won conference tournaments in the WAC with New Mexico State 
and then got thumped in, in every NCAA. He's 0-5 in NCAA tournament games. He doesn't have any big wins throughout the, the tenure of his coaching career at any stop that he's had. Why would anybody expect this to turn around in year four, year five, or year six, no matter how long sure. you extend him? Yeah. What has Marvin Menzies' resume shown you that suggests he's going to go out there and be a big-time winner at a big-time Division One program? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't see anything on there that says that. Yeah. I don't see why you keep him around to continue to be mediocre in a bad conference. Yeah, no, I, and I completely agree with that point. I just, I'd rather, I guess, I'd rather have. <laughs> Marvin Menzies mediocre coach then another mediocre coach coming in no, they saying, make a hey here's higher. our big hire uh, you know it's and it's again big. somebody that you just you don't know like a Bobby Houck right? right oh yeah they're great at division two and then they bring him bring him in and then they don't know what hit him hit him um, we want to close the book on the rebels we're expecting a new coach was Patino waiting in the hallway what do you think they're going to announce it. He wasn't in the hallway I didn't back. see him in the hallway no? I okay. wish he would have been Maybe in the he's hallway on but you think this move's going to come quick yeah, I think they can't afford to wait. Why don't wait. they do it right around? They can't afford to wait like they Selection did last time. Selection Sunday. Why don't they just do it on Sunday? Rick Pitino look, hired. That would be amazing. If You'd make national. Every kid in the country would know Rick Pitino was head coach at UNLV if you did it on Sunday. If it's Rick Pitino, if it's Dad Mata, if it's Steve Doesn't Alford, matter. it's somebody with a name, they've already talked to these yeah. people. Mm -hmm. There's no way they haven't initiated conversation with any of these people at this point. So the sooner the better. The sooner they're in, the sooner you can get in a room with every one of those returning kids and go, listen, this is going to be my team. If you want to stay, great. If you don't, get out, and we're going to go recruit. Get in there as soon as possible. But it has to be a big hire. Going to be fun to watch. Yes, sir. Vegas. Love, love working in Vegas. Hey, we're going to take a quick uh, break here. Listen to our uh, spots from the Pint and the Michael Westerall stage. See while we eat some more. We'll see you in just a second. Drink, dine, and play at the Pint during the pro football season. Join us all day Sunday plus Monday and Thursday nights as we serve up the best specials on the west side. $2 all-beef hot dogs, $3 beers from locally made Bad Beat Brewing, $15 buckets of Bud Light, and sound for every Raider game. Our carefully crafted menu and loose slots create a locals atmosphere you'll love, plus awesome parties during every Golden Knights game. The Pint, located at 9941 West Charleston near Wallapai. The Pint, your premier neighborhood bar. In life, just like in football, you need good hands to score. The Michael Westra Allstate Agency will carry you to success for every insurance need. Auto, business, home, life. Michael will personally see you get the best rates and our full service staff at 702-435-4211 will walk you through any claim, not refer you to an 800 number. For over 15 years, Michael has served charities in Las Vegas. He's ready to serve you at 702-435-4211, 702-435-4211. You know, I think one of our goals on this show is just going to be to torture Ron. Our super fan Ron comes in with his hot takes and his fire emojis everywhere. We're talking Las Vegas lights. Yeah, Woo! let's get into some soccer. Yeah. Opening night last Saturday, 8,017 on hand for opening night. Um, they played Austin, and I believe Austin's an expansion team, if I remember correctly. And they played to an exciting 0-0 yeah. tie, unfortunately. So, so Matt made a mistake. I'm going to call him out. So Matt tweets, and he's like, because they were doing the free ticket promotion. Matt's like, no oh, free yeah. tickets. And then the, light, the Light's Twitter account is kind of salty. They'll, they'll come after they you. They jumped you, on me, man. If you do something that they don't, they'll, they'll come after you. So they came after Matt. They did give away free tickets. They, they did. Gave away I missed it on the way out. Yeah. yeah I, oh, so, so you bolted. So, no, you got no, interviews. No, we went, yeah. down, went down Oh, the so field. Matt was working Las Vegas Lights. He got interviews, and you're calling him out for that. Now I'm mad at them. Ah, uh, it's fine. Yeah, we, yeah. we got it all straightened out. They got Everybody's it straightened happy out. Now. Um, yeah, so nil-nil would be the proper uh, yes. pronunciation. Yes, nil-nil on the nil -nil. pitch. Who would you talk to after the game? I uh, talked to Thomas Olsen, um, LV Lights goalie, good kid, local kid, Bishop Gorman guy. Um, I mean, pitched a shutout, but, uh, you know, just, just asked him about what he thought and, and grading the team. Uh, really good kid to talk to. Here's Tommy Olsen after the game. You're the man in goal this season. Just about playing in front of your, your home yeah. crowd now, I mean, it, you, you just light up when you talk about it. Yeah, I know. It's, that's kind of my, it's my dream come true, man. I've been waiting for a long time, and the timing of us getting a pro team and everything was just crazy, and me graduating and all this stuff. So it's all just kind of coming together. So, you know, when I finally get a chance to be the starter and all this stuff, it's it's special for me, for sure. So I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it, you know. It's uh, the best years of my life, so just taking it all in, for sure. First actual game action for the season, just grade the overall performance despite not getting the results.
result you wanted? I mean, I'll say B. I mean, obviously we didn't win, but uh, like I said, we I thought we were, we were solid all over the field. You know, not too many mistakes. It's just that final pass, man. So I'll think of B. You know, but expect wins, man. That's we're definitely not happy. Put it that way. We're not going in there happy. Those guys are frustrated. It's going to be a heated locker room, but you know that happens. We'll get over it and uh, move on to uh, Oklahoma City. It's a good looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I take away good from that. Good looking young kid. He's got good hair. Great hair. We might have him on the show. We can match our, we've, we've got good hair on this show. Uh, <laughs> I think we're doing all right. You talked to Winalda as well. Or yeah. Or press conference with Winalda. Man, Winalda. I'll tell you, before, before we get to this, the difference in having Eric Winalda in there versus having Shalise, who we had last year, obviously there's a language barrier there for most people anyways, but Shalise just, man, just a very standoffish kind of dude. Winalda loves to talk. Uh, just a really fun guy. He gets it. He understands. He understands not just the game itself, but everything that comes with the game and, and building this thing up. Uh, but fun guy to talk to. Here's uh, here's Eric Winalda uh, after the game. Coach asked uh, Tommy about grading the, the performance overall, and obviously disappointed with not getting a result. But he gave you guys a B. What did you think about the overall performance? That's just fair. I, I think. Uh... I think what, what he's alluding to, I'll give him an A, by the way. Anytime he walks away with a zero, we'll give Tommy a, you know, an A+. Plus. He did make a couple of saves there as well. That wasn't completely tested, but I thought he had great command uh, in the box, and everything they throw at us, threw at us, he was able to, to deal with. But it felt like a game that we were going to have to be better on set pieces because they, there were going to be fouls, and we were going to create those opportunities. And outside of Tripa hitting the post or the crossbar in the first half, uh, we could have done, we, and, and maybe the glancing header from Christian Torres as well in the first half. You know, not a lot there. Could have been more clinical in the, in the end. So, a B sounds good. We'll take a B. I, I, think, uh, I think that's fair. I, I, just, I just really wish we would have given our fans a win. You guys seem to control possession a little more than they did. You had the ball the majority on uh, your offensive side. How would you feel about the way they played on that side of the field? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, when you see a team literally drop into their own end, and they're all looking over their shoulders to make sure that, that they're covered. You know, they're, they're making an effort to just not get scored on. And if they got something on the other end, I mean, Kleber is a phenomenal player in his career. He's getting a little older. He's 35. But he still has a lot of quality. So it was something that we need to pay attention to. But, look, I think, I think the lesson here for us is that teams are going to play like this against us. They're literally going to get behind the ball and make it as hard as they possibly can for us to score, and we saw that in a very organized, bold side tonight. I like uh, Winalda. Yeah. He's, f he's fun, isn't he? Yeah, and, you know, and he, he talked about the way Austin just dropped back. They weren't going to let unless something got through. And a couple right at the beginning of the second half, two goals got through, neither of them legal, unfortunately. One was an off sides. The other one, I think, was thrown in. Uh, but uh, they really just kind of packed the zone and wouldn't let them do anything. But good atmosphere out there, like always, last season. Yeah. I mean, again, over 8,000 showed up. Um, their next home game is uh, the 30th, I believe. Right. They play Oklahoma, that's, Oklahoma City. I, that's on the road. I can't. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this Google yeah. um, document. Uh, 30th, I believe, is the next home 30th game. 30th is the home. Golden right. Knights uh, Appreciation Game. $99 will get you a ticket to the game and a jersey. The, the special jersey they're wearing for this game, it's going to be a Golden Knights uh, soccer jersey. So it's going to have the Golden Knights colors to it, LV Lights uh, logo on it. And uh, that'll that'll be a pretty cool thing to see. Um, so Cashman Field now, sole property of not yet, the, not until they need to sign the papers. Still, they're still. Paying. Oh, they have to open up. They have so to open up the Brett, Las Vegas ballpark. Owner Brett Lashbrook oh, talked about this at our media luncheon a couple of weeks ago. Um, until the Aviators, Fifty Ones, whatever you want to call First them game. now, stop paying the lease, stop mm -hmm. paying rent on Cashman Field. Once they stop paying rent. They are no longer the primary tenant. Until that time comes, they are the primary tenant. They're still paying rent. They are the primary tenant. So as soon as the new facilities open up and they stop paying rent money on Cashman Field, the lights will become the primary tenant. Then they can start doing things. Um, it has been talked about them closing off that right field side, putting bleachers mm -hmm. in there, making it a horseshoe. I wouldn't be surprised if they take down that second level of fencing out there in the outfield and, and reintroduce the grass berm like we had back in 1983 for the Las Vegas Stars. Um, but I'm sure they're going to do it. He, he talks about a lot, a lot of upgrades to the stadium coming in the next few years. So technically not <laughs> the Las Vegas Light Stadium. However, they have taken kind of their uh, ownership of There's it. There's no They've more ball covered field up the out mound. there. Right, exactly. Let's move to the other stadium across of town ball fields. on the west side. 
that's the point I'm trying to get here. Uh, Las Vegas ballpark. It has got grass on the infield. Man, it looks gorgeous. It does. It, it looks, looks gorgeous. Here's a picture right here. April for you. 9th. Sold out crowd, sell out crowd coming. I can't wait to uh, to see that. I'm gonna actually Tickets. clear my schedule and make sure I can get there. Uh, Tickets going for 150 on the secondary market. Yeah, it looks it looks just beautiful. Look at that gorgeous ballpark. Um, man. It is coming along. I just love that marquee. I love that font. Las Vegas ballpark, um, biggest video board in minor league baseball. So we're really looking forward to that. Should be good. Uh, maybe next week we should at least try to track down Jim or somebody, Don Logan, um, from the Aviators, Absolutely. and they can come on and talk to us. Uh, uh, about it. Um, winner of the contest, 15 bucks to a Grimaldi's. I'll give you another 30 seconds uh, to get your best comment in. But I think I know who the winner is. And I, I like doing this uh, with Grimaldi's. We appreciate them donating the gift cards. Five locations across town. You can use this gift card at any of those locations. Um, are, are we Yeah. Are so we in agreement good. here? We know who's not win winning. That's Ron. <laughs> uh, although I did like the, the Groupon uh, comment that he left. Where's that at? UNLV was giving a buy one get six free on Groupon. That was good. I did I did like that comment. So second place, right. we'll say a, a right. second place finisher to Ron. But uh, I like Inez's comment. Her combination of the the stuff's not going to fit in her Ultima right. uh, with uh, yes, Rebel fans care. For they Hollett. need support too. She's already showing showing yeah. some love for Hollett. We got some late comments in here. Interview the assistant equipment coach. <laughs> You'll Lord. win an Emmy. Thanks, Ron. I've got two at home. Ha! How about that? You we already Emmys. have Emmys. You and your we have, Emmys. We have three in the background here. Rich Giacovino won those. We're a five-time well, Emmy award-winning so show. Them, yeah, exactly. I, you know, i gotta got to put people in their place. Ron's comments are funny. It, just for that, Inez, we're going to give it to you. <laughs> you know what? She said Rebel fans need love, too. Yeah, it, so you buy the pizza. You can give Ron a slice there if you, you want. Well, we'll, re we'll reach out to you on Facebook, Inez, and we'll make sure that you get your $25 gift card to Grimaldi's. Thanks to Grimaldi's. Thanks to our new sponsor, Hollett. Thanks to Bad Beat. Thanks to the Michael Wester All State Agency, the Pint, um, and anybody that I'm forgetting about um, right now. But, so many uh, now, John. Yeah. No, great show, Matt. Nice job. Again, uh, we talk Raiders, we talk Knights, we talk everything that's happening in the city. If you're new to watching our show uh, and you're watching it now, it's going to stop here in a minute. You can go back to the beginning once uh, Facebook processes it, and then you can watch from the top of the show and get a recap of all the Golden Knights stuff that you may have missed and the Raiders stuff that you may have missed. Um, final thoughts? Uh, another horrible UNLV season has come and gone. Uh, make some noise, Desiree. Make some noise. Yeah, the not, city. The city needs this team to be good. Make some noise. Can you repeat the information about the Knights game on the thirtieth? You know, as our uh, yes, um, this isn't Golden Knights game. This is the Lights game. This, yeah, this is this is the LV Lights are doing a Golden Knights tribute game. They're wearing uh, special Golden Knights soccer jerseys for the game. Ninety nine dollars will get you a ticket and reserve you a jersey as well. Ron is on fire. Ron's giving himself props. All right, uh, I don't have anything else to add. Um, Ron, you're not going to hear us talk about the Rebels until they make a new coaching hire. Then you'd be interested in that. God, probably. I hope that happens before. Uh, I hope that happens before our next show. Yeah, I agree. I really uh, do. We'll, <laughs> we'll try for no next week's spring break. I'm probably going to be gone. First next day of the week. NCAA tournament. Oh, for you, yeah. First day. In... Da, 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 uh, there's da, da, da. a final Knights, thoughts. Knights game next Thursday. Yeah, that I might will be at. And I, I might will be at. I don't know where I'll be at. All right, so we're going to say no you'll show be at next the Knights game. I might be out of town. Ah, you might be. Kids don't know. Might be Disneyland. Or, well, they know or now. Castanitos, right? You can find me there, Ron. Ron will track me down. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Bye, final, probably. Fi no, final thoughts. Uh, March Madness, man. I can't. Yes. Remember. I can sit all day. I was talking Thursday, with my Friday, wife. Best like, two days in sports. It was like Disneyland or March Madness. And I was like, honey, I could sit at home all day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and be completely entertained and not spend a dime. There's an ESPN zone. At downtown I know, Disney, yeah, I know, I'm just I know. saying. But I wouldn't go there to hang out at the ESPN <laughs> zone. I wouldn't do that. All right. Uh, thanks, Rich Jacovino. Again, thank you all for tuning in. Give our Facebook page a like, and you can watch this show from the beginning starting shortly. That's We're it, done? man. We're done. Let's get out of here. All right. Let's sign off. We'll see you next time here on Sports Adrenaline, Las Vegas. Drink, dine, and play at the Pint during the pro football season. Join us all day Sunday plus Monday and Thursday nights as we serve up the best specials on the west side. $2 all-beef hot dogs, $3 beers from locally made Bad Beat Brewing, $15 buckets of Bud Light, and sound for every Raider game. Our carefully crafted menu and loose slots create a locals atmosphere you'll love, plus awesome parties during every Golden Knights game. The Pint, located at 9941 West Charleston near Wallapai. The Pint, your premier neighborhood bar.
In life, just like in football, you need good hands to score. The Michael Westra Allstate Agency will carry you to success for every insurance need. Auto, business, home, life. Michael will personally see you get the best rates and our full service staff at 702-435-4211 will walk you through any claim, not refer you to an 800 number. For over 15 years, Michael has served charities in Las Vegas. He's ready to serve you at 702-435-4211. 702-435-4211. 